welcome you uh, to the Indiana Girls Lacrosse Association Sectional Championship. Tonight's second game is between the Garen Catholic Golden Eagles and the Nobleville Millers. If you could please stand for the national anthem. Emma Potter. Number 12, Erin Wilson. Number 14, Anna Duty. Number 20, Sydney Klinger. Number 23, Kylie Morris. Number 24, Kat Green. Number 26, Meredith Miller. Number 28, Grace Hammond. Number 31, Jacqueline Klinger. And number 32, Kaylin Mertens. And your starting lineup for the Golden Eagles. Number 2, Sammy Bischoff. Number 3, Avery Arger. Number 4, Anna Peabody. Number 5, Ella Bellflower. Number six, Anya Gladowski. Oh, number 10, my apologies. Number 21, Olivia Morse. Oh, number 23, Zoe Rainey. Oh, number 26, Audrey Darling. Oh, number 27, Carly Wilson. Oh, number 39, Caitlin Tupper. Oh, Number 43, Danielle Hunkler. And number 99, Sophia Bischoff. Welcome, we're here for our second game of the night. At Karen Catholic, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> At Garen Catholic, our game between um, the Garen Catholic Eagles and the Noblesville Millers. We had a great first game this evening between Hamilton Southeastern and Fishers, with Hamilton Southeastern coming on, coming out on top. Yes, and uh, I am Veronica Mitchell, and tonight. I'm Hannah Dabble. Uh, we've um, had a great first game. Ready for second game action here tonight in the Indiana Girls Lacrosse sectional um, 2A. Uh, this is the first round. The winners will proceed to the championship on Tuesday, 
the 21st at 6 p.m. That game will be played here at Garen Catholic. Um, and as uh, Hannah mentioned, Hamilton Southeastern has already secured their spot in that championship game. Um, so as both teams take the field tonight, uh, the Lady Millers and, I'm sorry, not the Lady Millers, the Noblesville Millers and the <laughs> Garen Catholic Eagles here will uh, get started shortly. And these two teams haven't faced each other um, in the regular season, so this is the first time that they've met. And we have um, Noblesville is coached by Bailey Tobin, and Garen is coached by Brian Billund. It looks like to start the game, we've got Kat Green for the Millers and Carly Wilson for the Eagles. And Emma Potter snags the ball out of the air with a one-hand reach there, so the Millers will attack first. Quick shot by Emma Potter, and good heads-up play there by Kylie Morris to chase that ball to the end line to maintain possession for the Millers. So we'll see the Millers try to get their attack started here early, seeing what the Garen um, defense gives them. And it looks like we have a quick shot there again um, by Kaylin Mertens. And she stepped into the crease, so that will be the goalie ball there for Garen. And Cam Mertens will go behind her. The Millers do decide to mark up on the goalie, so there should be one Garen Catholic Eagle open. Cam does successfully get the ball back from the goalie, shoots, it goes behind, but Cat Green is the closest to the end line when the ball goes out, so Miller maintained possession. Cat Green comes across the top of the crease there, getting forced high uh, by the Garen defense. We have Sydney Klinger on the drive from the top with the right hand shot that is able to find its way to the back of the net there for the first goal of the game by the Millers. Sydney Klinger, a player that's come on strong here this year for the Millers. Excited to see the level of intensity that she brings to the field um, and her confidence has uh, really helped her this year on the field be such a strong contributor to this team. So we're back to the center here as the Millers take a quick one goal lead in a long game this evening. Cat Green at the center line for the Millers. And we'll have a redraw there as the ball did not quite go over the heads of both the players in the middle. So Carly Wilson steps back to the line for the Golden Eagles. Cat Green is able to snag the ball out of the air for the Millers. Good adjustment there uh, by Cat Green on the, the draw. And that should be a shooting space call there for Cat Green. So she'll get the ball at the eight meter and get a free possession shot. A free position shot there. And um, the defense has to, they can't be in that space that the attacker has to goal. Um, they have to lead with lead in with their stick and give them that open lane. Um, just a safety call there. So Kat's able to drive hard off that free shot and bury it high, putting the Millers on top two to zero. I like to see Kat Green get involved early in the game, um, especially off the free position shot. I know she's been working on on that outside of practices and, and everything. So good to see her get that. That'll help her confidence level in this game, I think. And Kat Green is a member of the, was voted to the all sectional team selection for sectional team under honorable mention. So congratulations, Kat. So we'll be back for the draw here.
And Ella Bellflower collects the ball for Garen and pushes the ball upfield. And good defensive stop there. A good drive around the top of the crease um, by Garen, getting her stick around both defenders there and um, squaring up her shoulders to put that ball in. And that's Olivia Morse on the goal, number 21. And the, the Millers were there. They just didn't close off and um, let her kind of get to the middle. Would like to see that slide commit a little bit sooner and really force that ball out. Um, but Olivia did a good job there of recognizing that seam and getting through it. This ball goes long. And Kayla Kubel's at the restraining line, able to pick that ball up. And she gets through past her defender. Uh, Miller, her teammates stayed out wide and let her work uh, the one-on-one -on -one there. Maybe saw quite a mis mismatch opportunity. And she was able to drive in. Kayla has a great shot on goal. She's so good at placing that shot and um, has such finesse when she drives in there. She absolutely does. And it looks like the Golden Eagle defense there was, I don't know if it was lulled to sleep or caught off guard, but... You know, they were back to the 8, to the 12, but Shirley didn't crash in. Yeah, and the, um, and the Millers are keeping uh, quite a few people up at that restraining line. You see Garen kind of respond in kind and pull a couple people up to help this time in case that draw does go long. And Kat's able to put it right up in front and grab that ball. She's doing a good job mixing up the draw control where it's going and what she's trying to accomplish up there. Emma Potter finds Kylie Morris, turns around and tries to take the quick shot there. And the Golden Eagles come up with the ball. Miller's doing a good job pressuring that ball, not letting it get out of there, tacking in fast. And that looks to be a detaining call on the Millers. Um, the stick was not quite in the right position, so so they will move behind, and the Golden Eagles will get a start off the foul. Good pressure, though, by the Millers. Good um, hustle by Kayla Kubel coming from the back to get the back check. And good defense by Meredith Miller there, just to keep her stick in the way. So when the Garen Catholic player brought her stick to throw, it was there. And the foul by the Millers will give the ball back to Garen. Who Great job by Grace Hammond to get up there, close out, and play some strong D. And unfortunately, it looks like there was just a little bit of contact there after um, Olivia got rid of the ball. And so that'll be a foul on Grace Hammond, who will have to go outside while Olivia will get the ball um, back behind goal. You can see we have an open player in the middle, and Sydney Klinger's doing a good job extending, able to get her stick on that ball. Good follow-up, though, by Ella Bell Flower to be there for the missed pass. And Garen maintains possession. Good job by the Millers to have their sticks up. And a big shot attempt there by Avery. So Millers are getting there. They've knocked down a lot of passes. Um, unfortunately, the Eagles have been there to pick up the ball. But I think we've already had you know, three or four Millers with deflections and knockdowns. Good help slide there by Grace Hammond on that roll. Garen Catholic doing a good job trying to find the open player. And a shot there by Ella Bellflower. Millers are able to gain control. Jacqueline Klinger gets the ball in her goalie circle. And she'll step out looking for the player to pass the ball to. And she'll get a lot of pressure, um, as typical when goalies step out <laughs> of their circle. Um, and she was fouled. 
So she will get a free start there. Anya Gladowski on the foul. She gets the clear out, but it is over the head of, I think that's Olivia Long there, and the Eagles do regain possession. And the Millers have a good double team out here, giving pressure to the ball carrier. Like to see the Millers um, pick that intensity up on an unsettled offense. They're able to get back in to their settled defense. And we can see the, the help side there for Olivia Long as Anya Gladowski works hard and is able to draw the foul. You can see the referee on the end there did hold up a yellow flag, which indicated a slow whistle in girls lacrosse, which means he saw a minor foul, um, but was going to see what happened on the scoring play. If Anya would have gone to goal and taken her shot, the flag would have gone away. But as soon as the scoring play ends, she's able to get a free position shot here. She chooses to peel out from that hanging hash, passes in to the eight. And that is Carly Wilson, who finds the ball on the ground, continues moving her feet to goal, and makes a good shot. Great job of uh, the Golden Eagles of just staying scrappy down there. You know, even though the Millers have had quite a few opportunities to get the turnover, they haven't quite completed that. And Garen has really just been able to get that ball up and persevere, and they got a goal off of that, bringing in the score to three to two with just under 18 minutes left in the first half. So we have uh, Carly and Kat back at the center line here. And Kat puts the draw up right over her shoulder there and is able to box out Carly and um, catch that ball. Good hard drive by Kat, um, but it looks like Anna Peabody was there to get the check and knock that ball loose. Sydney Klinger using that kick to her advantage. Able to kick that ball as the Garen player was going for it, and then she was able to run and get it. Kayla Kubel finds Kylie Morris open in front of the goal, and Kylie's able to turn, shot fake, and put that ball away. Kylie Morris wide open in the middle of the eight there, so probably a little bit of miscommunication from the Golden Eagles, but great job um, catching that ball, turning and getting a good shot off. Yeah, and I think the... Um, I think maybe Garen thought that their teammate was going to come up with the ball over there, and Sydney using that kick all initiated that because that was a quick turnaround which caught everybody out of position, um, and the Millers were able to anticipate and get in position to capitalize. And the kick is something I wish actually more players would take advantage of. It's something that is certainly you know a great part of lacrosse now and something you can use um, to regain possession when it's on the ground, and Sydney certainly does a fantastic job of it. The Millers get the draw. Kylie Morris again finds herself cutting across the top off the feed from Anna Judy, and she does a good job of getting to a better angle. I really like she caught that ball at a low angle shot, and she was able to take a couple steps, get her stick around, and get a good solid shot right in front of the goal, making um, the goalie for Garen, Sophia Bischoff, have to move. Um, which opened up spot for her to put that ball into. So that'll bring us back to the center draw um, here. And uh, Kat and Carly will Put the ball up, Emma Potter gets a stick on it and Kat Green follows it. Finds Emma Potter in the middle. Kayla Kubel fading away from the ball, unable to catch that pass. Goes in hard um, along with Reagan Haney there and they uh, kind of sandwich that Garen player, so that'll be a foul on the Millers. So Garen Catholic will get the ball. So we have a fight for the ball here at the midfield. 
Garen's able to collect the ball. And the Millers give some good pressure here. Sydney Klinger meets Ella Bellflower there at the top of the scoring area. Ella passes it behind goal. I believe Ella's a freshman um, on Garen Catholic, um, but she has a very good knowledge and awareness of what's going on on the field. She's been a player I've been wanting to see play this season, so I'm excited to be here. Good defense there by Erin Wilson, also known as Fern, as I'm sure you'll hear us refer to her this evening. And she does a good job getting around. Nice save by Jacqueline Klinger. Fern, er, <laughs> Aaron Wilson was able to push that shot wide. Jacqueline saw it coming and was able to make that step onto the goal, onto the ball to make a save for the Millers. Big clear upfield to Aaron Wilson, who will bring it across the restraining line. Lots of pressure from Garen. Kylie Morris in the middle. Like to see the Millers turn on the burners here. Good. Uh, that was a really good way to connect the dots down the field. Kayla Kubel caught that pass, um, drew that defender for a split second, and then Reagan Haney was able to be open there on that um, lane that she found a goal. Another player in Reagan Haney who has stepped on for the Millers this season and is able to score um, when needed, uh, and her teammates really trust her with the ball. Looks like Garen... Catholic will go ahead and take their first time out here with 15 minutes and 20 seconds left to play. Miller's on top six to two. And uh, the Millers are doing a good job with their um, stick work and ball handling down the field tonight. Uh, like seeing them work together and um, keeping their heads up on the attacking end, finding the open person. Uh, Garen is having a little bit of a problem finding all all of the Millers down on that end and making sure that they're getting the biggest threats marked. And I'm sure that's what Coach Billen is talking to them about, uh, making sure that they don't let anybody get behind them um, and constantly are just staying with uh, the biggest threats in the ball carrier. So I, and I hope Coach Tobin is letting the Millers know that this game is far from over. The common theme that we've seen um, this year in lacrosse in Indiana in general is a lot of up and down play by a lot of teams. The Millers are not excluded from that. Um, so we would like to see them really put the uh, pedal down and just keep it there for the duration. And um, it'll be a good kickoff for the start of this tournament week here for them. Absolutely. I mean, we just saw um, HSE and Fishers play, so um, whoever comes out of this game tonight is going to have some tough top competition. Yeah, the um, HSE team tonight did a great job, too, just to reiterate they were um, pressuring the ball all over the field um, and just really helped each other out and um, knocked down a lot of passes, and they had some really good speed. Um, and then on top of that, their attacking group is pretty strong. Um, and they have a lot of people that they rely on to get the job done down there. So um, it'll be a, a fun championship game for this sectional 2A uh, next Tuesday at 6 p.m. here at Garen. So the Golden Eagles get back to the field first, and the Millers will join them. I think one key for the Eagles is going to be um, – Getting the draw here, it seems like they, um, you know, the Millers have been gaining possession. And since that Eagles defense, as you mentioned, hasn't been able to find everybody um, on the defensive end, uh, they're really going to need to pick it up and get make sure the ball gets down on their attacking end. And it looks like um, Garen will change up their draw a little bit. It looks like Ella Bellflower will step to the center line there with Cat Green. Cat has been winning the draw tonight, um, so it'll be interesting here to see if she can, in, in fact, get the ball to Maddie there, who is open. You can see Garen has um, brought down an extra defender on their defensive end. And Cat does a good job pulling that ball back, but Ella tracks it very well 
and just runs onto the ball and catches it. And the Golden Eagles get the ball down, find an open player, but unable to hang on to that ball. And that will be in a shooting space call. Um, so the goal will not stand. And Sammy Bischoff will uh, step to the eight meter line and take a free position shot here. Nice save there by Jacqueline. Nice big step to the ball. Gets the quick clear out to Cat Green. Nice job by Cat Green collecting that ball. And she did a good job too with the defense on her back of keeping her stick in front so that Anya could not get her stick around to make a check there. And, the, and Garen does pressure out quite a bit. So that's just an instance where I think the Millers need to um, slow down and maybe utilize just a common give and go there. Um, with the speed that they have up top, they should be able to get through there with that, that high pressure. Nice way to stick with the whole play. Emma Potter never gave up, came up, and was able to get a check and get that ball away from Ella. Millers are on the drive here. And the Millers will keep possession of the ball as there was some contact as both players went for the pass there. Cam's going to get reset here. Kaylin Mertens, you'll hear us refer to her as Cam. And she finds Kayla Kubel, who fakes out the defender <laughs> with the pass to Anna Judy. And uh, looks like she went into the crease, so that goal will not stand. But that was an excellent fake by Kayla Kubel. It looks like the goalie cleared a little bit. or Well, it looks like Cam might have uh, jumped into the crease as well on the goalie's clear. So she'll go behind and we'll get a new goalie clear here. Quick clear there from the goalie. And the pa pass is a little bit much on the sideline. Everyone hustles over. Nice speed by both teams in the midfield. Good try by Meredith Miller to get her stick on that ball as she was coming down to get in position for defense. And that's Anya Gladowski with the ball there who finds her teammate Kylie Krischke who takes a quick shot. Now the Millers are face guarding Anya this evening. So in um, lacrosse, it's very similar to basketball. Face guard, the defender will guard. Um, Olivia Long here is guarding Anya, trying to make sure she does not receive the ball at any point. She's not responsible. Olivia's not responsible for sliding. Anything else on the defensive end except for making sure that Anya does not get the ball. That was a great defense there by Grace Hammond. Would like to see your teammates get in there and help her out a smidge, but she did a good job of getting that um, ball through there. Good double team, good pressure by the Millers. Get the Garen Catholic Eagles find the ball into the middle there. Good job by Meredith Miller as well. The Millers are doing a really good job of just getting their sticks up, knocking stuff down, and just creating chaos everywhere. And that ball will stay on the attacking end for Garen here as the ball went off of Olivia Long. And Anya's a key player for the Garen Catholic uh, team. And that's a quick shot by Carly Wilson. Uh, number 27 for Garen. She catches and does a quick stick release there. Um, Anya is the leading point scorer coming into the game for Garen. Um, and typically when that happens, the that person is also the leading scorer on the team. But in Anya's case, um, she's very unselfish. She has 83 total points, but 55 of those are on an assist. Um, so that's something you really like to see in a a girl um, of her caliber letting her teammates um, score off of her a drive and assist and everything that she has and um, Carly Wilson who just scored there is one of the ones that has capitalized there she's second um, in points on this team so it looks like Emma Potter will step to the circle with Ella
And Cam Mertens is able to get in front of Carly and catch that ball in the air. And Kylie did a good job keeping the defender on her back, um, but just a nice re-challenge there by Emma Potter. She came in, was met with three or four uh, Garen players. She pulled out and then turned around and made that quick shot, unable to make it uh, connect, but it was a good re-challenge, and I liked her taking that shot for sure. Nice good pressure here by Anna Judy, and I think that's Kayla Kubel trying to get up there as well for pressure as Garen tries to get the ball out, which they do. And it looks like they'll try to capitalize here on the Millers getting back on defense. They've done a nice job of connecting the dots down the field as well. They have. And that's Carly Wilson again on the drive and the quick shot. Another player who does a good job of driving and knowing when to shoot that ball. Did just miss the cage there, but uh, her team's able to be at the end line and keep possession for Garen. And that was um, Anya Gladowski there on the drive to goal. Um, she drew the shooting space call, which is uh, obstruction of free space to goal, as we discussed earlier. So Anya will get her uh, free position shot here at the eight meter. And she revs back and puts that ball right at a spot that's really, 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 really hard difficult. to save for um, any goalie um, right off of her opposite stick side there. Right above her hip. That was excellent placement and nice speed too uh, by Anya. Uh, Gladowski number 10 for Garen, which brings the e Golden Eagles within two with just under 10 minutes to play. Um, in this game, and we'll have Emma Potter and Ella Bellflower back at the center line for a draw control here. I think Garen just needed to get some pregame jitters out, and Coach Billen did a good job of making a few adjustments. Um, I like what I've seen coming out of the last time out there from Garen. And that is a push um, and a quick restart there, um, even though it wasn't her ball. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Potter tried to pick that ball up and get started, um, but the foul was actually on her, so that ball will go to Garen, and they will come down the field here and get the quick um, shot there. Did a good job of drawing that defender over and uh, making the pass at the right time caught the ball, made sure it was in her stick, and put that ball in. Yeah, it's tough for the defense there on the fast break. Um, they did what they could, but um, in that situation, when the player is able to draw that defender and pass it off at the right time, it's a tough shot to stop. All right, so this will um, bring the game within one. Miller's on top, six to five. Cat Green at the line with Ella Bellflower. And Cat's able to put that ball right back to where Emma Potter's standing. And that. And good job by Sydney by not forcing Nice that grab, ball in. Emma Potter. Unable to connect on the shot. And it looks like Garen was closest to goal and the ball went out. I'm sorry, closest to the inline. Let's see if the Millers can get some good solid pressure here on the ride and play tough between the restraining lines. Maybe create a turnover. And there's Reagan Haney able to pick the ball up, getting a lot of contact there. We saw that a little bit in our first game. It looks like the refs tonight are letting them play a little bit. Good kick by Sydney, putting that ball back where she needed it to be. And good control by Sydney also not to freak out and throw that ball away with pressure.
And Garen is doing a really good job of pressuring everywhere um, in the field here and uh, being pretty aggressive um, on their ride. Emma Potter with the drive down the middle. Nice shot fake, good placement. I like to see her go back to basics there um, after a couple shots that she took earlier. Um, go back to basics, put something in, and really find a uh, groove tonight for her. So hopefully she'll keep uh, rolling with this um, drive that she just had and do some more of that. Good ball movement by the Millers down the field. So that brings the Millers back up by two with a score of seven to five with seven minutes and 35 seconds left on the clock in the first half. And Mallory Miller enters the game for Olivia Long. She'll take a quick break while her uh, mark does as well. And we're back at the center line here. Good placement on the ball by Kat Green and just the tenacity to stay in it and fight for that ball. Um, she does really well. So the Millers are trying to spread the, the play out here a little bit. We'd like to see the ball move a little bit more here on their attacking end, make Garen work some, um, and just pass it around, make a move, make their heads turn um, instead of standing there in that, that spot with the ball. And the, we'll the movement is what, in the fast breaks, but the movement as well is what, um, what they've had success with so far. And that was a, a push defensively there, so Cam Mertens gets the ball. Great quick start. Looks like Cam will get a free position shot here at the top of the eight. Good time shot there uh, by Kayla Mertens. She got in, uh, got around, and made the goalie step to her left and was able to put that ball over on the right. Really like seeing uh, Cam get creative there on the offensive end as well. Overall, the Millers are doing a great job of using um, fakes, moving their sticks, finding good spots to put the ball. For sure. And, um, and Sophia Bischoff is a, a great goalie. Um, I know she's been uh, working very hard, and she's done a lot of things. I'm not quite sure her save percentage, but um, she's helped this team quite a bit, and the Millers are doing a good job of just making her move and getting her out off her line, opening up some shots for them to put away. So it looks like number 30, Maggie McGuire, is at the center line with Kat Green. And that ball didn't quite get above the girl's head in the middle. So we'll have a redraw. Excellent box out by Kat Green. Emma Potter came in to get the ball. Unable to make that catch because of the Garen girls around her, but Kat was on the outside to get the ball for the Millers. Anna Judy on the outside. Finds Mia Blackburn behind goal. And Kat's had a great start to tonight's game. She has. She's done a good job. And I think a lot of times um, what she does at the draw circle and in between the 30s is overlooked um, by a lot of people. So she did a good job tonight of... Um, making some adjustments. And Kaylin Mertens, heads up play there, driving to goal, looking to shoot and drawing that shooting space call, which will give her a free position shot right at the center hash at the top. She's 
Just about five minutes left to play here in the first half. And Kayla Merton's able to go and put it to her left top corner, putting the Millers in front, nine to five. That was a really heads up play by uh, Cam on that drive. Like her restraint and not taking that shot and being disciplined enough to know that she was gonna get the foul and get a better opportunity there at that center hash. So that'll bring us back to the center line here for a draw. I did not think that ball went over their heads. For sure, but it looks <laughs> like we're going to play it out. Emma Potter comes up with the ball. Feeling pressure, outlets to Mia Blackburn there on the side. And Garen's pressuring out quite, quite a bit past that 12. Uh, Cam Mertens finds the ball on the ground, drives hard. Takes a big shot, but Kylie Morris is back there to catch that ball as it flies over. And Kylie tries to get to the inside of the crease. Loses the ball, but fixes it up and outlets to a teammate. Garen's really pressured out and trying to get the Millers off guard and not let them set up any plays or have any nice looks coming down the field. Foul there by Mia Blackburn, so she'll go behind. Good. Get the Millers did a good job of hustling back there initially. So now we'll see what Garen does here offensively. Um, Anya is still out of the game here. So we'll see how the team responds. We still do have um, Ella and Carly out there on the field. We'll see if they try to utilize them. Millers do a good job of staying on the cutters through there. Lost sight of <laughs> one, just as I said it. I think you jinxed them there. It's called an announcer's jinx, I believe. <laughs> And Garen's being very patient. They're really moving the ball. And Carly does a good job hustling around and beating the Millers um, around the crease there and getting her shot off. But they're able to deflect. And Olivia Long gets that ball, finds Mallory Miller, unable to connect that pass, and Grace Hammond picks up. Good job communicating by Grace and Mallory, making sure they both didn't um, fight each other for that ball. Yeah, for sure. So as we get the ball uh, set back here off the foul, Millers do a good job of pressuring the ball carrier here as she brings the ball behind goal. Erin Wilson meets her at the goal line. And there was a flag up, so as that scoring play ends, the whistle will blow. One thing I'd like to see from the Millers is they've had a couple great double teams. They seem to kind of flow out of those once they've stopped the player. But once they've established a strong double team, I'd really like to see them stay in it and work really hard to get the ball back. Agreed. That's something I know that they work hard on, um, and they're really good at, at getting those double teams. But you're right, the, the purpose of that is to create some turnover. So hopefully we'll see them get that together a bit here. So we have Ella Bell Flower on the hanging hash on the outside. She drives in, gets around the Miller defense, but is fouled. So that'll pull her back out to a free position shot at the eight meter. And the Millers will clear the shooting area. And 
And she drives in. Jacqueline's able to step to the ball. Good heads up play there by Grace Hammond. She knew she was closest to the ball, so she just let it go out. And it looks like we'll have a yellow card um, check to the head. Uh, as Grace was going to throw the ball, it looks like Garen may have come in contact, stick to head. And that's an automatic yellow card in girls lacrosse. So that'll be a three-minute penalty. For number 11, Kylie Krisky. So Garen Catholic will have to play down here. Ball's clear to Sydney Klinger. The Millers aren't able to collect, and Garen Catholic does get pick the ball up. Uh, Sydney Klinger comes up with the ball, finds Kylie Morris. who drives in and is met, and that's going to be a block on Garen. Um, and the you may hear some reaction there, but it's all about time and space to react. Um, Kylie didn't have enough time to get off of her line in order to avoid contact with that defender. And Kylie, Kylie able have to put in off. another one? Again, another player who is really come along and um, is fun to watch shoot and score. Her finesse and her shot placement is something that she's worked a great deal on and you can tell that by this season. So that puts the Millers up by five. And so Kat Green is at the center line here with Maggie McGuire. That draw did not go over their heads, so they'll bring it back for... It looks like oh. they're going to say that Kat didn't move up with that ball. That's why it didn't go up, so they're going to award the ball to Garen. Good job by the Millers, slowing the ball down, making sure that we didn't get a fast break here in the final minute. Doubling Caitlin Triffer here. Good Doing pressure. a fantastic job applying that pressure. And they are up a man, so they should be doubling that ball, which they're doing a great job of. Aaron Wilson, nice check. Way to be patient on that check. And it was very quick and easy. We have 30 seconds to play here as Anna Judy brings the ball down the field. And she drives down the right side and is able to put the shot past a couple defenders there, putting the Millers on top, 11-5. With about 26 seconds left to play here in the first half, good pressure, good heads-up plays um, defensively by the Millers, knowing their man up, uh, putting some pressure on, and then going down and capitalizing off of that um, yellow card here. And that yellow card um, did happen. We talk about the penalty time. It's unreleasable. Um, so what I mean by that is um, most of the time in sports, if there's a penalty, once a team scores, they're able to come in back into the game. But in girls lacrosse, they do have to spend their whole three minutes out. And that happened at a minute 48 left to play. So that we will have some carryover into the second half on that penalty. Good draw, went up, Emma Potter runs through the ground ball. And we'll see what the Millers look to do here with about 15 seconds left to play. Millers need to look to pick up the pace here. There's about five seconds left. Looks like we'll run the clock out um, to take us into the second half. Um, with the score of 11 
to five. So we'll take a short break and we'll come back for second half action here at Garen Catholic High School with Noblesville um, on top 11 to five. When medical care is needed, where will you turn? With Communities Connect to Care program, one call or click finds you the closest open appointment. Request a time yourself or let us do it. From a primary care doctor or virtual visit to a med check or community clinic at Walgreens. Just call or click. You can go right to our website or to me. Connect to Care from Community. Are you tired of watching your favorite IHSA broadcasts on your small mobile device? You can now watch them on your TV with new apps for Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Brought to you by the IHSAA and Blue Frame Technology. First apartment. Dog named Bella. Boyfriend. TJ. With the sweet ride. And the bad secrets. Exit TJ. Hey, it's Eric. Wedding. Eric Jr. New house. Luckily, once a year, Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance checks to see if we're paying too much or cover too little. Find an agent and stop knocking on wood. Hey, Deb, why do they call us Logan Street Signs and Banners? Because we started off at Logan Street. But we're on South 10th Street. We moved 22 years ago. Why didn't we change the name? That would have just confused everybody and they wouldn't be able to find us. Now I'm really confused. Bill, we're Logan Street Signs and Banners, conveniently not located on Logan Street, but on South 10th Street in Noblesville. Can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to order a hamburger, fries, salt, maybe a large vanilla shake. It's a trophy shop, can't you tell? You got carry out? Everything that you need, we have here at the shop. Very unique. You order today, carry out tonight, that's our version of carry out. All right, I'll take one of everything. Oh, that may take a little longer. We'll have it for you tomorrow night. I'll be back tomorrow to pick it up. We'll be waiting for you. Superheroes come in all shapes and sizes. They don't always meet in an underground fortress. Sometimes they meet in places that appear to be very ordinary to most people. But inside, there are heroes in training. Some are smart, strong, or brave. Maybe they can build cities, or heal people when they get hurt. But even superheroes need some help sometimes. With your support, we can change the world. Together, we are a force that can't be defeated. Support the club. Save the world. Support your local superheroes and donate now to the Boys and Girls Club of Noblesville at bgcni.org.
can do nobles well. And we're back um, tonight at Garen Catholic um, High School for the Indiana Girls Lacrosse Association Sectional 2A Games. Um, real quick, we'd like to give um, a recognition to the players that were selected earlier this week to the all-sectional teams. I'll start with the Noblesville Millers. On the first team we have Mia Blackburn, Kylie Morris, Emma Potter, and Aaron Wilson. And then on honorable mention, we have Kat Green, Jacqueline Klinger, Olivia Long, and Meredith Miller. And for Garen Catholic, first team is Ella Bellflower, Anya Gladowski, and Carly Wilson. And honorable mention is Avery Arger, Mariah Ross, and Caitlin Truffer. So congratulations to all those players as they've worked hard all season um, and uh, are receiving some recognition at the all-sectional level here for their, um, their group, which would include the two teams that played earlier tonight, Fishers and Hamilton Southeastern. So right now the officials and coaches are discussing how to um, carry over that penalty card from the first half that came at a minute 44 left to play. So they'll have a little over a minute and a half, or a little under a minute and a half, sorry, left on that um, card. Um, so the Millers will be up a player until that player is, the Garen player is released from the penalty. So we're back at the center line. And it looks like Ella uh, Bellflower maybe and Cat Green back up there. And Ella's able to collect that ball for Garen. Good job by Grace Hammond coming up and staying out of shooting space. They're in this double team again. See there, they stayed in it, and it did end in creating a turnover. Which is good, and I think they're, they're probably a little bit more confident because they know they're up a player maybe, so they're staying in it. Meredith Miller does step to the ball there, but unable to pick the ball up off the ground. So Garen comes up with the ball off the turnover. And just a missed pass there, but Ella's able to collect. And she drives hard and takes a shot and is able to get that one past Jackie Klinger. Um, so Ella Bellflower puts the first goal in on the second half, bringing Garen to six goals for the night. Garen doing a great job there of getting control of the ball and then scoring despite being down a man. Uh, that's about its best that can happen when you're down a man. Yeah, agreed. Um, you don't want to, especially when you're down, you can't really um, take a lot of time. Um, so if that opportunity is there, you do want your girls to take it. And Ella had made a good choice there with that shot selection. So Kat will do some redirecting there um, with Sydney and Emma as um, Anya and Kat step to the line for the draw here. Emma tracks the ball in the air well, makes the catch out of the air. And good roll back to the middle, freeing up some space, finding Kayla Kubel, who's unable to hold on to the ball and um, trips just a little bit. And as Sophia goes to pull that ball back, it does cross the goal line. So that will count as a goal um, for the Millers. And it'll just be a goal against um, the goalie there. Um, unlucky on that, truly unlucky, but um, it did cross that goal line, so the officials did make a right call. Um, saw the net move there, so. So that will bring us back up to the center line. We'll have a, a draw with Anya and Kat. Cap 
and Anya put the ball straight up into the middle. We'll see who comes up with that ball. Looks like Carly's able to get the ball off the ground, and she uses her speed to get the ball down the field. Nice block there by Aaron Wilson. Oh. Got her stick on the ball and picked it up off the ground there. Good job by Aaron Wilson. Back check by Anya Gladowski. It looks like now we'll have a foul coming off the side there. So Aaron Wilson will get the ball. Garen in a strong double team there, but Fern is able to roll out of it. Found teammate Anna Judy who brings it down. Cat Green was wide open in the middle, but the ball didn't get to her. Oh! She unfortunately ran into a Garen Catholic player. Good sportsmanship there by Garen helping her up. Not seeing that a lot these days. So it will be Cat's ball. And Emma draws shooting space there as she drives to the goal. So she'll get a free position shot at the top or at the eight meter there on the outside hash. Emma drives in, left hand, and does a good job of putting that ball low into the back of the net. We haven't seen very many low shots yeah. tonight from the Millers. And that's Emma's second goal on the night. The Millers are doing a good job spreading the scoring around. Six different scores this evening. That brings the score to Millers 13, Golden Eagle 6 with 22 minutes left in the half. And we know we have one of our favorite listeners out in Milwaukee, Auntie Dono. We'd like to say hi to you tonight. Hope you're enjoying the game. And so Emma Potter will uh, step to the center line with Anya Gladowski for the draw here with, uh, at Garen Catholic Field. Emma Potter tries to snag that ball with one hand, unable to hang on to it. Ella Bellflower gets it, and then a quick foul. And good self restart there by Ella Bellflower. Good check by Sydney Klinger. Maybe could have gotten her feet around a little bit more, I guess, is what that official saw. Um, but it looked good. It was nice and quick. So Ella gets the ball right in between the 8 and the 12. And she takes a quick shot, and Jacqueline does a good job stepping to that ball and making a save. She does, and they will mark her up. Unfortunately, she can't get the clear out to her teammate. And Ella Bellflower does a good job of drawing that defender over and then passing the ball off. Um, I think it was Sammy Bischoff over there. Can you see that number, Hannah? I cannot. Yeah, I believe it was Sammy Bischoff there on the goal. Good ball movement, good patience. Um, Jacqueline maybe look off that pressure in front of her mm -hmm. um, and then come back to her left. I know um, she did have an open player over there, uh, but that would free up some space for her to get that pass off. And Kat Green's back in the game, so everything should have checked out there with the trainer. And um, Anya Gladowski will step to the center line with her for the draw control here. And Anya tracks the ball down there and is able to collect. Missed pass. And the Millers will foul, so that'll give Sammy the ball. 
She'll pull out a little bit. Sammy has an open teammate who drives the goal. Nice save by Jacqueline Klinger. Sammy's there for the ball with no one tracking her. Really? <laughs> so race to the inline and the Millers do get there. So it will be Miller ball. Good self restart there. So a foul there, and we'll look like we'll wait for them to get clear our space a smidge. And Maddie Christie unable to hang on to that pass. Good pressure. Just looks like the six came across the body there. Um, a little bit anxious, but that's okay. So Carly Wilson will get a shot at the inside hash on the eight meter. And misses just wide on the bounce shot. Miller's had two players back there. And they are able to get to the ball. Hopefully they can successfully clear it out of their defensive end here. Good find in the middle. Cam Merton's open. She'll run and find the next open player here. Emma Potter does a good job running that lane down with um, Cam Mertens, hard drive in, and quick shot goes high. Good heads up play by Kayla and Kylie to chase that ball to the end line. Kayla gets around her defender. They get to check from the back. And that's a push on the Garen Catholic girl's body, so she'll... They do lose the ball there. Kylie Morris collects. Gets knocked down, but there's no call. She does hustle back up to play some defense. And it's going to be Noblesville ball. And Kayla finds Kylie, or I'm sorry, Cam finds Kylie, who then finds... Cat Green down the middle, and she draws the shooting space call at the top. So Cat will um, set herself up at the center hash. And Cat has meter. really mastered the art of getting the shooting space call. She does a good job of that. And when what they're looking for there is the opportunity to shoot. Nice placement. Pretty shot. Very good drive in and placement by Cat Green. Um, but the officials on that shooting space are looking for the um, shooter to have the opportunity to shoot, and they have to be looking to take that opportunity. So um, that's what we mean by Kat mastering that, um, the art of that. She's done a good job of when she gets down there, really looking to go to take that shot. So it looks like Emma Potter will step to the to the circle there with Anya Gladowski. And Ella Bellflower does come away with it. Finds Anya. She passes into the middle, unable to hang on to that ball. And Garen does come away with it. Millers keep the pressure on, and Sammy tries to find her way through a seam in there. I believe that's... No, that looks that's like That's number three, Avery Aguirre. I apologize, Avery, if I pronounced your name wrong. And that shot goes just wide. And it looks like 
the Golden Eagles were closest to the balls that went out of bounds, so they will maintain possession. And that will be a charge call, um, and it was beautiful. Grace Hammond did an excellent job of getting her feet to the place, giving the Garen Catholic player time to react to her being there, and she still tried to go through that. So that's an excellent call by the official. Great job by Grace Hammond, and Meredith Miller as well was there to um, track her as she came across and make sure that she wasn't alone on that. The Millers will get a turnover in the midfield. And Grace yeah. Hammond wasn't part of the all-sectional team, but she certainly could have been um, a great player for the Millers, and she does an amazing job. And that was a really, <laughs> really, really nice Really play. pretty. Uh, Kylie Morris went to pass. It was knocked down. She stayed in it, got the ball, made a quick pass to Cam, who was standing in front of the goal, caught and made that quick shot. Um, very pretty to watch. Nice teamwork there and way to keep their heads about them, bringing us 15 to 7 here with 16 minutes to play. And you were talking about Grace Hammond. On I that was. She's. Team. Yeah. You know, I think that she's definitely a player that, you know, has the talent and could have easily been on that team. Um, great player, very talented at drawing charges and playing um, down low and defending the crease role. And a lot of times she's also left down there as the lowest defender to last take on last defense. line of defense. <laughs> one v one, she sees a lot. And she's, she's definitely a strong, strong defender for the Millers and somebody they really rely on. Yeah, I think there's a lot of Millers um, that could have been on that team as well. This is a very talented team. Um, good backup there by Kylie Morris, who was looks like she was hit in the head with a stick there. So that will be an automatic yellow card if officials did and did see it. They did. So that, again, will be a three-minute penalty for Garen. And I believe that's number four, Anna Peabody. It is. And so the Millers will be up a player on both their offensive and defensive ends for that three minutes. So the Millers are spreading out a bit. Garen still pressuring out quite a bit. And that will be shooting space again. No, no shot there. That goal will not count. Um, as the Garen Catholic player did slide over in front of uh, Cam's lined goal. So Cam will get a free position shot at the eight meter. And that shot goes just high. And Kylie's back there to make sure we maintain possession. I'd really like to see a little bit better ball movement here from the Millers, really make that defense work and find the open player. Yeah, now's the time to really see what the Garen defense has and um, make their heads turn, make their feet move, get them tired, so you can um, hopefully ride out the rest of this game in that fashion. Good cut by Reagan Haney. Um, shot didn't make it. And it looks like we have a three seconds call, I believe. Maybe. So Reagan will take the ball on the hash. Tries to feed the ball to Kylie Morris, but doesn't quite get to her. But Cam Mertens is there to pick it up. Finds a cutting Sydney Klinger who weaves through a couple of people, takes a shot, but uh, Sophia is there to block that. She comes up with the ball for a clear. And Kat, Kat Green able, able to intercept that it. ball. And she's going to be smart here and pull that ball out and see what we have going on. It looks like the yellow card will end, so we'll be back to even. As Cam Mertens drives around the top of the crease and puts another goal in. I believe that's 
Um, putting the Millers up 16 to 7. 13 minutes left to play. And Cam Merton's another player that has been great all season long for the Millers. Yeah, she is definitely somebody who steps up big. Um, she plays hard all the time, drives hard, um, and really works um, constantly at practice and in games to bring everybody up. And it looks like Abby Haley will enter the game for Sydney Klinger. Emma Potter steps to the center line with Anya Gladowski. Millers have done an excellent job on draw controls tonight. Good placement by Emma Potter. And you can see the official does signal, for those of you that are aware of the game, does signal that she sees those fouls by putting her arm up in the air, uh, but doesn't want to slow the game down by blowing the whistle all the time. So it's a good thing to watch when you see those fouls as the official's arms go up and maybe give an indication that they did see the foul and they're letting it play on. Good hustle by Reagan Haney to try to save that ball, but she's unable to make it happen. So Garen will get possession off the turnover. Good pressure by the Millers. Garen is able to find the open player in the middle of the field. Avery again. And that'll be a block um, on Aaron Wilson. And that shot bounces outside the cage there. Uh, good crease roll by Garen, um, getting across the top there. Grace Hammond did a good job of forcing her out wide. Unfortunately, none of her teammates came down to help out on that. Um, so that's a shot that you think a, a girl um, would make oftentimes. Uh, good defense there, though, by Grace Hammond. So Emma Potter will be at the center line again with Anya Gladowski, uh, Kat Green, and Abby Haley join Emma Potter up there. Emma Potter collects the draw. Does a good job directing that ball back behind her, boxing out and getting to the ball. You also have to give credit, though, to the to Kat Green on the circle there. She knows what Emma's doing, so she steps in front of her person as well to make sure that she doesn't get in Emma's way as she's going for that ball. And that's part when you talk about people, you know, kind of underestimate what Kat does in between the 30s. Another heads-up play. Yeah, for sure. And Mallory Miller will chase down the ground ball. Finds an open Reagan Haney in the middle of the eight, but that'll be a blocking foul on Garen. So Reagan will step to the eight meter. Good back check there by the Eagles. Good pressure um, initially there, but didn't close it off. Kind of gave up on it. So um, you can see Garen takes advantage, and they start weaving through all of the people around the field. And that's Emma Smith with the ball for Garen. Doing a good job. She's see seeing some pressure, but she's maintaining. Pass gets a little bit away from him. The Millers do a good job there with their double team. 
forcing the bad pass, although I would have liked them to see them step up a little bit more to make it a little bit harder for her to get that pass off. So the Millers have obviously been working on double teams. They look really good, but they could just be just that much better by closing in on them a little bit. So that'll be a foul there on the Millers. As Garen brings the ball upfield. And Chaney uh, Cornell is back to chase that ball down. Finds Cat Green, Emma Potter. And it looks like Garen will step out and pressure the ball a bit here. Um, nine minutes left to play. So that'll be a turnover. Um, and the Garen Eagles will bring, Golden Eagles will bring the ball up the field. Mallory Miller's there to apply some pressure. What a hustle by Mer Mallory Miller to get back to the, even the next pass. Good double team, good pressure. There you go. And Cam's there as that ball was a little bit tough to hold on to. Um, I liked how much tighter that double team was by the Millers. Wide open Reagan Haney in the middle. Emma Potter finds her. Reagan drives down, takes a nice shot down low. So that puts the Millers on top 17 to 8. Eight minutes left to play. Emma Potter and Anya Godowski there at the center line. Ella Bellflower and Carly Wilson join Anya. While Kat Green and Abby Haley join Emma. Emma pulls that ball back behind her, chases it down. So the Millers will bring the ball down. We'll see what the game plan here is with a lead. Looks like they are going to spread it out here. I think the most important thing for the Millers is you don't want to slow it too down too much. They are having a good game here, and you want to make sure you're making smart decisions. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, maybe use this opportunity to work on a few things that um, you haven't been able to quite fine tune over the season. Ryan Wheeler unable to hang on to that pass, but she does get the ground ball. Drives hard, loses the ball as Sophia picks it up outside the goal circle. Clear in the middle. And Kylie Morris chases down the ball carrier. And Kylie's speed is not something we can truly see when she's down on low attack, but when you see her in the midfield um, helping defend the ball as it transitions, you can really see how fast she is. Good pressure by Abby and Mallory. Good check. Feet moving upfield with the ball. Didn't get too close to the player's head. Excellent timing. Good speed. And it looks like uh, the Millers will take a timeout here. Um, Coach Tobin has some words of wisdom um, to impart, I'm sure, letting them know maybe some, like we talked about, some things they need to work on, um, some things to run through against a defense that might not know what you're going to do against them. Um, so we'll see. I'm sure um, 
scoring isn't the priority at this point uh, with a, a lead, but we'll see how the Millers come out here. I hope that they maintain the defensive pressure, though, that they've had in this game because that's something that I think they've been needing to really work on, and um, Garen's not giving up. And that defensive pressure with what we saw in the HSE game, it's going to be great if they're practicing it against each other. And then um, they're going to be used to that pressure, right? If they're practicing it in practice, and hopefully those attackers and midfielders are, are receiving some of that pressure, and I'll certainly prepare them for their game against HSE. Yeah, agreed. And, um, and I'm sure Coach Villain has a lot of information that he's given his team to. Um, someone that I've been around a long time, um, with and I respect him a great deal as um, well as his assistant coach Leanne Langton uh, both do a tremendous job with this program um, have been with it uh, since inception I know at least um, coach Billen and um, coach Langton's daughter uh, they both played um, through Garen and um, had some successful times here at this school um, so it's been fun to watch them build this program and I'm sure he's telling his girls to just go out with six minutes. The game's not over, so hopefully he gave them that message. But just to keep playing strong and let um, the game be what it may as long as they leave everything out there. So, so the Millers will come back out. You know, the game certainly isn't over. And lacrosse, you can score goals very quickly. So hopefully for, you know, Garen Catholic, they can you know get this ball back and get it going the other way and score a couple quick goals. Yeah, and I'm sure Coach Billen has um, done his research on this Noblesville team. They've had some leads that have um, shrunk in the past, so um, maybe he's let his team know that too. So this was a, a possession timeout, so they didn't – only the team with the ball can call a possession timeout, so the Millers were able to do that. So the players just go back out where they were when the whistle blew. And um, the Millers look to pull the ball down, find an open Cam Mertens, who then puts the shot away there, um, putting the score, the lead by 10. Um, probably wanted to get that goal scored. So it looks like we're going to have a goalie switch here. Maddie Reel will come in for Jacqueline Klinger. And now that it has reached 10 goals, it will be a running clock. So the, um, the clock will not stop on goals, and in the final two minutes it will not stop as long as the, goal, as the difference stays within 10. So we have Emma Potter getting back to the circle here, and it looks like um, Danielle Hunkler will step to the center line for... Uh, Garen. And we have a visitor out in front, <laughs> you might have heard. Very he's, cute visitor. He's cute as button. And Potter's able to put that ball up and grabs it one hand. Cat Green's streaking down the side and receives that pass. Drives hard. Good dodge at the top. Nice quick shot. Good save by Sophia. Cam Merton chases down the ball. Drives hard, and the Garen Catholic team does do a good job of crashing, but that does put you in a spot to get shooting space. So Cam Mertens will get the outside hash here at the top of the 8 meter. Cam drives in, finds an angle, able to put it around the side of Sophia there, bringing the lead 19 to 8. And Cam's doing a good job. I think a lot of times um, people talk about how intense her drives are to goal and things, but she scores a lot of her goals off free positions because she does get fouled. Um, and I think it's her speed and her ability to weave in and out of people that um, get her the opportunity to get those free position shots. So it looks like the Millers will make some changes in the midfield here as Sydney Klinger um, gets back in. Cam Mertens will step to the center line, and Brooke 
Miller will join them as well. And that ball will, will do a redraw there. So the Millers will get the ball. It's about three and a half minutes to play. And so you'll see the Millers are going to slow the ball down. Allie Harp on the side with the ball. Doing a good job maintaining control of the ball there with pressure. Brooke Miller gets the pass, drives in, finds a cutting Kayla Kubel. So that's a good assist by Brooke, and then uh, Kayla Kubel does a good job of a catch and release there. And as we mentioned before, the clock continues to run here. So we've got about two minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. So Cam Mertens will step back to the center line here as the clock continues to run as the um, girls get back into place. Nice high draw there, Brooke Miller. And I can't quite see who that is, but that picking up the ball is Avery. And she's using her speed, who is very fast because Brooke is fast, I know. And Avery was able to keep in front of her. So that was quite impressive run there by Avery. <gasps> and there's a a drive and a shoot and score there by Garen. Mallory hit the deck there kind of hard, Mallory Miller, but it looks like she's okay. So we got some more subs uh, coming on. Um, score 20 to nine here. Would really like to see these midfielders get control of the ball um, and go down and uh, work this clock out here. A good draw, but un unable to really track it and get people in the right spot there. So. Uh, ball's on the ground. Cam Mertens does come up with it. About 45 seconds left to play. Finds Brooke. Abby Haley takes a shot with Katie Morris there to track it down. About 30 seconds left. The Millers are still looking to get a shot off here. And the referee does signal that they saw the push on the side. Finds Cam Mertens, who cuts through, tries to do a catch and release, but was unable to catch that ball first. Might have gotten hit in the head or the finger as she shook that off. Katie Morris does get the ball. And the clock will run out with a score of 20 to 9. Uh, Miller's on top. So the Millers will advance to the sectional 2A championship game, which will be played here at Garen on Tuesday the 21st at 6 p.m. against Hamilton Southeastern. We wish both teams the best of luck at that game and um, continued success for whoever may go on to the semi-state games, which will be played at HSE on May 31st, and the state finals at HSE on June 1st. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in tonight. And we will sign off from Garen Catholic High School.